my name is Vilana Tkach, and I direct Yara Arts Group from La Mama Experimental Theater in the Ukrainian East Village of New York. Today, Yara Arts Group is happy to present a virtual event we created for the Ukrainian Educational and Cultural Center. We start on a series of presentations about Zinovi Stokoko, who brought the Ukrainian epic song tradition to New York in the 1950s and developed it in the 60s. Today, you'll hear samples of Stokoko's original recording, and I'll talk about the third wave of Ukrainian immigrants to the US after World War II. Then we'll talk about a talk with master bandura player, Julian Katasti, about Stokoko's recording, and also we'll get, have the pleasure of hearing some of Julian's own work inspired by Stokoko. Dobry day. Я Вірлана Ткач, художній керівник Яри мистецької групи в Нью-Йоркській українській дамтавні Нью-Йорку. Сьогодні почуємо записи з нові штоколи 50-х і 60-х років. А у Нью-Йорку поговоримо про нашу третю імміграцію це по записи штокол з бандуристом Юлієм Новкитасте. Та послухаємо, як Китасті грає на хнені репертуару штокол. If you would like a program from today with the list of the music played, information on how to get it, and everyone's bios, you can download it as a PDF on our homepage, uh, www.yarartsgroup.net. Our event is bilingual. Everyone will be speaking their own language, and we'll summarize in the same language if you need to. Наш вечір двомовний, маємо програмку, але тільки по-англійськи, і кому не скачати з нашої веб-сторінки. У нас маленький ритуал, який починає кожну подію. We have a little ritual, we start our shows. Welcome to your art school, dedicated to the theater and all the poetry, music, and images that inspire it. Today, Yara is not at La Mama, but in virtual space. Be time. played by Zinovi Stokoko, who was born in 1920 near the town of Berezhane, today in Western Ukraine, in the Ternopil region. On this map, Berezhane is part of, the, in the eastern part, uh, Ukrainian Halachina, which was then part of, uh, before World War I, was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. During the war, it was a much contested area, but by 1920, it became part of Poland. His father had purchased a bandura in Prague. It was a gift for his older brother who had died. And this traumatic event propelled Stokoko into two areas of study. First of all, bandura and also medicine. Stokoko's first bandura teacher was Vikim Klutuski. Then he studied with um, Yuri Zinhalevich in Lviv and later was influenced by the Kharkiv Bandurist Leonid Haidamaka, who had worked uh, with Nat Khotkevich, and both of them are in this picture. And Khotkevich was a great propagator of the Bandura tradition. 
Schlockocker also, um, uh, Schlockocker also uh, was influenced by Rehori Bajou, also a Kharkiv, a Bandura. Um, in 1952, Schlockocker emigrated to the U.S. after completing his medical studies. He became part of that third wave of immigrants to the U.S. from what is now called Ukraine. From um, the first wave was about a half a million people came between 1870s um, to, to the First World War. They were usually vi villagers from Western Ukraine. They called themselves Rusins or Ruthenians. But the US authorities have often labeled them as Russian, Polak, Slovak, or Austro-Hungarians. Many of them came to work in the coal mines of Western Pennsylvania and enjoyed folk culture. And for more about this immigration, you can uh, watch the virtual event, our virtual event on folk fiddler Pablo Huminuk. After World War I, uh, we had a second wave of immigrants to the US. And these immigrants often had been involved in the struggle for Ukraine during the First World War and afterwards. And they came to promote their ideas and causes and had a very different idea of culture. The culture despite its appearances, did not sing village folk songs, but rather Lermontovich's sophisticated arrangements of these songs. Only about 40,000 people came in the second wave before America closed its doors to immigrants as this cartoon from 1921 urged. By the end of World War II, there were over a million Ukrainians in Europe in camps, refugee camps or displaced person camps. Um, and many of them, about 85,000 came to the US and they settled mostly in large cities, Philadelphia, Chicago, Cleveland, Detroit, Newark, New York. In these cities, uh, the new immigrants found that there were established Ukrainian communities with Ukrainian Catholic churches and Orthodox churches that the first two immigrations had established, like this is St. John's in Newark. And there were also schools uh, in, like St. John's in Newark. Uh, there were also many um, publications in America, even some of the oldest continuous uh, Ukrainian daily newspaper um, in the world, really. Uh, from the 19th century was Svoboda, and it's published to this day. In New York, there, were, there was the Ukrainian village, which boasted an active Ukrainian community and numerous Ukrainian businesses, meat stores, clothing stores, and even four Ukrainian bookstores in the 50s. Uh, including this bookstore, owned by Miron Surma, who came in 1910, Sudmart sold books and sheet music, honey, and Ukrainian wear of all kind, as well as records. There, there's more about the beginnings of the Ukrainian East Village at, on our home uh, during our, our home nuke event. We have one of them. This is Sudmart's store in the 40s uh, until just very recently, and it was on 7th Street, located across the street from St. George Catholic Church. Meron Sudmach claims that the very first Bandura he ever saw came to the U.S. with Vasil Yemets in 1929. And Yemets stopped by the store. Sudmach says he arranged for Columbia to record him. He issued 178 records, but unfortunately didn't sell too well. And Yemets also uh, left for a tour of the U.S. and Canada at that point and didn't have time to promote it. The second Bandura Surman saw was Miroslav Yakovsky's in 1944. Yakovsky, who was born in Montreal, had handmade his own Bandura. Surman says he arranged to have the young man record children's stories and accompany himself on the Bandura. You know, I actually remember some of these, uh, these tales from my childhood. They used to play them in my house. Here's a little bit of Ivasik to us. Жили собі дід та баба, і був в них маленький синок на ім'я Телесик. Телесик ріс такий гарний, що баба з дідом не натішиться ним. 
Ot je pidri svin, toj kaže Zrobit mi je tatu zlotej čovnik ta sridne veslečko, a budu ja ribku lovete ta vas hodovate. Djed izrobeo zlotej čovnik i sridne veslečko, spustilo na ričku, telesek sin i pojihal. With the third immigration um, came a number of people who could play bandura. And in 1948, Turmach recommended to one of the recording studios that Stepan Hanushevsky's group be recorded. Uh, Zinovi Stokoko came after that. He came in 52 to New York after he graduated med school in Germany with honors. But it would take him years to gain his American license. Soon um, after he landed, as many immigrants, he walked into, uh, Stokoko walked into Surma, since this was the store where everybody met. And on the wall hung a lira, a hurdy gurdy. It was handmade by Andriy Stanislavski, who once uh, lived in the Surma building. Andriy Stanislavski, or Andrew Stanislavski, as he's listed in the credits, even played a Lirnik in the Talka Poltalka, the first Ukrainian hockey movie that Avramenko would produce in the 30s. A Lirnik turns the, the wheel with one hand and presses the keys of the Lira uh, to, uh, with the other. And according to Surmaj, Stokoka picked up the Lira and it came alive in his hands. No one played the way he did, he, he said. Um, then Stokoko introduced himself, saying, actually, he played the bandura much better than Alira. Surmat said he could record him on tape in a private studio, and they went to this place called Zipperscope, uh, and that is where Stokoko recorded Duma about Marusha Bohoslavka a few days later. Чорному морі, та на тому камені біленькому, там стояла темниця, ка кам'яна. Там стояла темниця кам'яна, я в тій темниці пробувало сімсот бідних козаків, а в неволі пробували. Світу Божо, ні сонця праведно не зобачали. Дівка Брамка, Маруся попівна Богуславка, Гей, то в темниці прихождає, Да до козаків словами промовляє. Гей, козаки, панове молодці, Чи ви знаєте, що в нашій землі християнський день за тебе? Surmaj released this recording in 1952, and he says they recorded many more tunes in the next couple of weeks, but w did not issue any more records. The young Ukrainian Americans wanted dance music, and the new immigrants wanted to hear songs from the recent war, not from long ago. Um, Surmaj eventually gave these tapes. Uh, that Shavkoko recorded in October of 1952 to Stepan Maksiuk, who compiled a collection of two long playing records. They came out in 1970. Um, and unfortunately, it was already two years after Shavkoko himself had passed away at the young age of 48. Now, uh, please help me welcome Julian Kitasi, who is the Bandurist in New York today. And please uh, tell us about the Novi Stokoko. Well, 
Well, um, I never met Stokoko. Uh, uh, when he died, I was uh, 10 years old and just a kid growing up in Detroit. Uh, and yet uh, his influence on my life and especially on my work with the Bandura has been uh, quite substantial. Uh, I grew up in a family of Bandurists. Uh, my father, my grandfather, and uh, my grandfather's brother, Rehori, uh, came to the United States, Banduras in hand. Um, they were members of the famous uh, Ukrainian Bandurist chorus, which immigrated as a group in 1949, settling eventually in Detroit. Stokolka, uh, th then a very young man still, had played uh, briefly with the group in Europe and left an indelible impression as a virtuoso Bandurist and as a personality. So he was a legend uh, with my family and among their circle, uh, especially for, for his performances of Dumas, like Marusa Bohuslavka. Uh, so I heard his name a lot. And uh, uh, those recordings uh, that Surmach had issued uh, got lots and lots of play in our house. So that was part of my growing up. So when did you learn to play Bandura? I learned to play from my father in a youth group um, in a church basement in Detroit originally. Uh, we learned to play, um, and we learned to play our first, uh, the first music we played was a repertoire of instrumental dance tunes. And it was only later that I found out that my father had in turn uh, learned those dance tunes from Stokalka. So what were these tunes like? Well, we've, uh, we've already heard uh, a couple of them today. <laughs> the, the, both those songs in the medley from that old Shokoka recording uh, were part of the repertoire uh, that we played later in Detroit and part of the repertoire that became the instructional repertoire for generations of Bandura players in North America. Uh, so uh, here's... Um, and I still play them, you know, they're still in my repertoire. So here's, uh, here's a couple of them. Oh, great. Yeah, here's my take on these, these two. <laughs> came to New York in um, 1980 uh, 
at the invitation of Mr. Nick Chorney uh, to become uh, the music director of the New York School of Bandura. Uh, and, and one of the first people I met, uh, you see him on the screen right now, uh, was Livko Maestrenko, who had been a very close friend of Stokelka's. Uh, Livko had an engineering background, and he helped Stokoko set up his basement recording studio. You mean there are more recordings of Stokoko playing? Yes, there are. Uh, at one of our first meetings, Livko Maestranko gave me a box with 12 cassette tapes. He just finished uh, working with the master recordings and preparing them for transfer. And so he was able to give me in that one box uh, all of the music that Stokoko had recorded in his basement in the 1950s and 60s. Basement tapes. What's on them? Well, uh, just an incredible amount of, um, incredible amount of uh, material. Uh, there were, um, of course, epic songs, uh, <clears throat> more epics, alternate versions of the ones that were on the Surma recordings, uh, working versions that show that Stokoko was con constantly trying to develop uh, what he did with this genre. <clears throat> there were many, many instrumental pieces, uh, some absolutely, um, uh, you know, tremendously interesting for me, uh, instrumental kind of semi-composed, semi-improvised instrumental pieces that uh, really opened a, a door for me in my own playing. Um, and uh, of course, there was just a vast repertoire of solo songs. Um, I'd uh, grown up uh, playing with the Bandurist Chorus, with, uh, with these big groups, and it was on those Sokolka recordings that I really um, uh, uh, that I really heard somebody whose fundamental direction in Bandura playing was uh, as a soloist. So I especially loved the historical songs that he did. And uh, a particular favorite of mine is Oi Tisiche Simso Devinosta Persho Horoku in the year 1791. That's a song of uh, earlier immigration. Uh, going back to the forced transfers of population in the Russian Empire at the end of the 18th century. Uh, Farewell, Dnipro, you muddy river. We are going to drink clear water from the Kuban. Выходу запорожців на Кубань у 1791 року. Сейчас им сход 
Well, um, a song of displacement and refugees, certainly something to be heard today. Now let's hear for Julian Capasti and his version of this historical song by Stokoko, um, or that Stokoko wants to play. Um, well, if you enjoyed our virtual event today, you'll be glad to know Yara's creating a virtual series on Stokoko with the Ukrainian Museum in New York later this summer. Julian, what can you tell us about this Stokoko series we're planning? Well, it'll be a chance to take a much deeper dive into those uh, basement tapes. Um, we'll do a segment uh, specifically on Dume, Ukrainian epic songs, both in general and on the way uh, Stokolko's performances really uh, kind of transcended the genre from within. Uh, and uh, also, um, also a segment on his instrumental music on the the banduras that he played, what made them unique and different, and what made his playing unique and different, and how it fits into the whole uh, story of bandura in the 20th century. Uh, uh, also, uh, we'll look at uh, his other work with narrative forms. He did uh, really groundbreaking experimental work trying to recreate trying to recreate the uh, medieval Belene uh, of medieval Kiev uh, as a storytelling form with Bandura. And uh, also uh, he wrote uh, modernist poetry and uh, in some of, his, uh, some of his work, especially those instrumental improvisations that I alluded to, he really showed how you could, as I say, transcend a tradition from within, how you could uh, draw on the uh, the ancient uh, music of the Bandura to create something absolutely uh, of his time and of our time. Well, um, Old Man Surmach held on to many, many things in his story, uh, including old records and books no one seemed to want. Um, and um, his grandsons, sold me a Shokoko record, as well as his grandfather's memoirs before the store closed uh, in 2016, just shy of its 100th anniversary. And I am so glad he did. And I think people listening today are glad he did too. And here's a copy of his book. Uh, so, Diasporas preserve, but also create Ukrainian culture. Um, and it is the 100th anniversary of Stokoko's birth, right? Um, which should be celebrated. Um, Stokoko is the person who helped preserve for us this Ukrainian epic tradition and also developed it in New York. So friends, if you have pictures of Ukrainian cultural events, in um darian can you put me on um and uh if you have ukrainian cultural events in america or have uh personal or family stories you would like to share with us please drop us a line our next event will be in uh on vasily um Afremenko. so if you have photos or films or music let us know, especially if you have a copy of Natalka Popalka, which I'd love to see, and that first uh, Ukrainian um, talkie, as they put it on the posters. So first, now let's hear it all for Julian Katasti. And um, our visual designer was Valdemar Klusko. And thank you, Darian, uh, for running back for us today. Give us a wave. And a big thank you to our sponsors, um, Ukrainian Community Foundation of Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Self-Reliance, NFCU, as well as public support from New York State Council, On the Arts, and all the Friends of the Arts. We rely on you for, for support, so stay healthy. 
um, we have a theater program for today's events, which you can download from our website. Tell your friends about our events. You can listen to recordings from the past anytime you'd like. Um, so you can hear the home and yoke thing about the 20s fugler. You could also hear about uh, our production in 2003 on all of Lishaha and Muswan. And now you'll be able to listen to this one in just a few minutes from now. You can hear Shafuka's recordings on YouTube. And as we know, you can take, now that you know, you can just Google it and they'll pop up. Our exit music today will be doing Kitasti playing alive. Angelana Kach, thank you and good night.